everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be working on my 2007 Yamaha R6, installing upgraded sprockets for the front and the rear. I have a smaller one up front and a larger one to go in the rear, hopefully to give this bike a little bit more bottom end power and make it do some wheelies. So I already have them installed. We're gonna go through the full installation in just a second. If you are interested in these products, I will have them linked down below in the description. You can go ahead and get this exact same setup for your bike. Here are the stock ones laying out. But anyway, we're gonna start off by taking this fairing off and start removing things to do the install. all done very simple to get the fairing off as well as the chain guide this is a 16 tooth sprocket up front so we're gonna be shaving two teeth off of it next up we now need to remove this bolt right here I think it's a 30 millimeter socket I do not have one of them I think I have is like a 21 so I'm just gonna use this an adjustable wrench hopefully I can get enough leverage on there I'm gonna keep the bike in gear and then we're gonna slam on the rear brake just to really hold everything tight I don't want to be turning the gears or anything like that if you are gonna be using an impact, I would suggest you keep the vehicle in neutral just because the last thing you wanna do is destroy any gears. Hopefully everything goes smooth. Hopefully it's not on too tight and I have enough leverage. All right, four minutes of turning a bolt later, we got it off. So I ended up using the 12 inch adjustable wrench, the 18 inch, as much as I had way more leverage, it's way too big to actually get there. And this is actually the handle from the Pitbull bike stand that I'm using, so that actually helped me with some extra leverage, just putting it on like that. So if you are planning to use an impact wrench, honestly, that's kind of overkill by hand. You can easily do this with a breaker bar and the correct size socket. If you do not have the correct size socket like myself, you can just use the 12 inch adjustable wrench. That made it very simple to do. So that should be it for the sprocket. I believe this will just come right off. I think we have a washer on it. Yep, and then there's these splines that hold it all in place. So for this, I'm gonna go back to the 18 inch. I think that should give me enough leverage to get this. And again, a socket is way better, but I just don't have anything that big. So the axle out, the brake caliper just comes right off. Looks like that is really only held on by the actual axle. Wheel is sitting freely. The sprocket and chain are obviously still attached, but now we have a ton of slack. So there's everything off the bike, the chain, the sprocket, the rear wheel. It's a little hard to do with one person, but as you can see, it's very doable. So then just a quick look at everything now, the stock one comparing it to the new one, you can tell how much larger the new rear one is. That is a lot different in size. So only a few more teeth different. We got a 49 tooth to a 45 tooth, and then the 16 tooth, you can see the differences in size as well. So this really should do a pretty good job giving the bike some low end torque. Hopefully get some wheelies out of the R6 because it really cannot do one to save its life. But that is the disassembly of everything pretty straightforward. That is all on. That was kind of a tricky thing to do. I think the chain is a little bit tighter than normal. Uh, we'll just have to adjust it a little bit. Definitely helps having a second set of hands for the rear wheel assembly. This one's very easy to put back on. As you saw, I went ahead and put the chain on this new sprocket first, and then we just lifted the wheel up, putting the caliper in place first, and then with the wheel in place, sliding the axle through. Thank you. 
So with everything nice and snug now, I have the shift linkage all back in place just so I can do a little bit of a trial run right now. I'm just gonna start the bike up, crank it up. So with a good trial run down, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all the bolts one last time just to make sure everything is torqued to spec, put it back together, and then go for a ride. All right guys, so we have everything all squared away. We're now gonna go for a spin. I've already driven the bike about 10 miles just to warm it up, get my bearings with it. It is definitely more torquey than before. You can definitely feel a difference. Now with that said, the speedometer is way off. So the speeds I'm going are definitely not accurate. But one thing really cool, the bike now can do a wheelie. says 100 miles an hour I am not going 100 <laughs> this might be like 60 miles an hour so as you can see the speedometer is definitely way off I'm not going anymore <laughs> but as you saw with that acceleration this thing rips through the gears now sixth gear there's a lot of torque down low like around 6,000 rpm fifth gear now but it really carries itself and again, that is not 100 miles an hour. There is no way. So we'll try another wheelie again. So first gear, just giving it some gas. <laughs> it seems to rev so much quicker, like the shift light went off. So much torque down low. Now, as far as drawbacks, um, it is definitely at a much higher RPM when cruising. So again, the speedometer, we're not going 74. We're going, this has got to be about 55, 60, and we're up at 7,000 RPM. So we're definitely at a higher RPM cruising. So as far as gas mileage is going to go, this is definitely less efficient. I do get about 150 miles on a tank. So with this setup, it's definitely going to go down. But as far as performance goes, I mean, this thing did a wheelie without even trying the first gear. Sixth gear, though, I do like how there's a lot more torque. Like, even that. I mean, the bike didn't have that type of get up and go down low. This bike really shines high RPM, like above 10,000, it rips. But now it seems like way down below 10,000, it actually seems to pull. So let's do just a first gear pull because I feel like that's a lot of the weak points like when I'm first getting into traffic on a normal road or something like that. So let's say I'm getting up to speed, oh, getting into traffic. Yeah, I'd say at least by 6,000 it's already starting to really pack a punch. Like right there. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is definitely <laughs> got a lot more power. So that's probably about a 70 mile an hour pull right there. But I do like how this thing can now do a wheelie. Not that I do that a lot on a sport bike like this. I mean, I say that for like dirt biking, but it is fun every now and then if you're just having some fun with the bike. What a difference, what a difference does it make? I love the low end torque. Now, am I gonna keep this setup on the bike or not? I'm not 100% sure just because I ride this bike a lot as a daily, so I don't know if the higher RPM when cruising is gonna be worthwhile. So let's see in second gear, cruising, so 6,000 RPM. Well, that is definitely way different than before. I don't think I feel the same top end that the uh, stock setup had. I feel like the stock setup, it was a little laggy, like under 10, and then it just pulled really hard in the higher speed. I don't feel that same drastic difference. That's probably just because now the usable torque curve just is a little bit lower. 
Alright, so that's probably about 60 right there. Um, but yeah, that definitely is better. So I think my overall opinion and review, I might swap out just the rear sprocket to the stock one. So that at least give me a really good blend of a little bit better torque, but a more accurate speedometer as well as less highway cruising. So right now we're going like maybe 55, 60, and it's definitely at a higher RPM. Normally I should be around 5,000 RPM. So for my daily type driving with this bike, this might be a little bit too aggressive. I mean, right now this is, I mean, this is pretty high in the RPM for cruising. But as far as the fun factor goes, if you are gonna do this setup for more racing or more performance oriented riding, I mean, this is a powerful setup. Definitely very usable torque. So third gear. And that gets up and goes. And it almost feels like the front wheel is like off the ground doing that. It really pulls. Even just that, I don't know if you can see my body moving, but that is some torque. And then we'll do one last wheelie because <laughs> I have never been able to wheelie on this bike. guys that is gonna wrap up today's video hope you enjoyed it taking the r6 doing some modification to it getting this thing to finally wheelie because this bike is not a wheelie vehicle in the stock configuration hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below if you want to stay tuned for plenty more videos to come so that's it guys we'll see you next video